Is it real, Clint? People want to know, is it real? Is it real? Is it real? Does that look real? I think it's real. I think it is real. I think it is real. Is it real? I think it's real. All right. Yeah, it's real. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome to tonight's sunset story. I think it's real. Yes, tonight's sunset story is a true social media, true story about social media. It's about Instagram. This is an Instagram story, really. That's really what this is. I love social media. You know why I love it? Because it's, it's fun and it's work at the same time. Like all the work that I do on social media, I really like it. You know, a lot of times I go through my list of friends on Facebook because I have almost 5,000 friends on Facebook. And I go through the list like looking to get rid of some so I can make room for new friends because Honestly, pretty much like I treat every Facebook friend and every Instagram friend and every LinkedIn friend and every YouTube follower as prospects for what I do. I'm very fortunate. Most of the time I go places and I just talk to people about what I do and they end up signing up with me, getting what I offer, okay? Because what I offer any, any expert Anybody who's an author, a speaker, a coach, an entrepreneur, anybody who does what I do, which is all of those things, anybody should be wanting to do all those things because that's what celebrity entrepreneurs do. We, we uh, promote ourselves as speakers, as coaches, as entrepreneurs, as experts, using television, speaking at very important places, photos with famous people and winning awards and writing best-selling books. That's what we do. And as a result of this, all the time that I spend on social media, I'm working. Well, Instagram, I gotta tell you, Instagram is not my favorite platform because it's all photos, basically. And I, I like photos, but I also like reading stuff. And there's not so much to read on Instagram. I just find that Facebook is my preferred platform, but I do like Instagram, especially because there's some nice pictures on Instagram a lot of times. For example, there's this lady named, Co named Coco, okay? She's married to Ice-T. Ice-T is an actor, a rapper. You've seen him on CSI New York. You've seen him on uh, all kinds of movies. He's a famous rapper and actor. And Coco is married to him. And, you know, Coco kind of like, looks like Ali, except Coco's a like very sexy pinup model and Ali doesn't work as a pinup model. She could be a pinup model, but she doesn't do that professionally. Coco does. And I started following Coco on Instagram and every time I would see pictures of Coco, I would love them because she just pushes all my buttons, really, just like Allie does. And every time there would be a hot picture of Coco, I would show Allie and Allie would like it too. And I remember like one time we saw pictures of Coco and Ice T at the Playboy Club in New York City. And I'm like, hey, look, they're at the Playboy Club in New York City for his birthday, we should go. And we got dressed and then we were about to leave. Like, Allie got dressed in like five minutes. She was ready to go out the door looking smashing hot. And then, only then, like I saw another post of hers and it, and it became apparent they weren't there that night. Those posts from the Playboy Club were from the night before. We loved them, we loved them. Well, we're getting ready to do our event last September at 
the Carnegie Hall Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing, that event. I know a lot of people came to that event. It was amazing. I had Martha Stewart. I had Jerry from Ben & Jerry's. I had Dan Kennedy was supposed to be there. Unfortunately, he got ill and I had to fill in for him. I had, um, I had uh, Michael Gerber. I had Scorpion. I had the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer. I mean, it was an amazing lineup. And I reached out to Coco on Instagram and I sent her a direct message on Instagram. I said, hey Coco, I would love to pay you a lot of money to come and do an appearance at my event at Carnegie Hall with Ice-T. Are you interested? See, that's the way I talk. When people, like, here's what I've learned. At 54 years of age, I have learned that money talks. That's what I've learned. I've learned that I can have pretty much anything I want as long as I'm willing to pay for it. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a beautiful, amazing aspect of life in the United States of freaking America? We can just buy stuff. Pretty much we can buy what we want. Pretty much. For, for some crazy reason, a lot of people want stuff for free. Why do people want stuff for free? I don't know. I don't want anything for free. I want what I want and I'm willing to pay for it. So I sent her this message, Coco, I want to pay you a lot of money to do an appearance at my event at Carnegie Hall with Martha Stewart and Jerry from Ben & Jerry's. Are you interested? And I got a message back and it said, someone from my team will reach out to you this week. Fantastic. I'm like, wow, cool. A couple days later, I get an email from this guy named Sol G. Sol G reaches out to me. Hey, I, I understand you're interested in Coco and Ice-T. I'm re their representative. And I look him up and, you know, he's kind of like me. He's got all these pictures of him with celebrities. He's got Kim Kardashian on there. He's got Chris Kardashian. He's got, uh, he's got Ice-T. He's got a bunch of, like, rappers in that whole world and him and he's putting himself out there kind of the way I do I put myself out there my favorite type of marketing is celebrity attachment marketing so we start negotiating a price and I say okay good uh, send me the deal memo on that and he sends me the deal memo on his letterhead I'm telling you it looked it just didn't look right it really didn't look right. And, and he has me paying him. It's like this deal didn't look right, smell right, taste right. It just seemed weird. But I wanted iced tea and cocoa. <clears throat> so I rewrite the deal my way. And after all, I'm the producer of the event. I send him a deal memo, basically like that. And he's like, there's no way they're going to sign that deal memo. There's no way... It has to be my deal memo, okay? They're not gonna do it. And I'm like, huh. And, and like, it, it just, it was just terrible paperwork that did not make any sense. Terrible. So luckily, I call up my friend who has normally been booking my celebrities for me, right? I've been working with this guy. He's an agent who books celebrities for corporate appearances. And I say, hey man, have you ever heard of this guy, Solji? He says that he represents Ice Tea and, Co and Coco. He goes, no, nah, I never heard of that guy. He goes, uh, what are you doing with them? And I, and I told him about the deal that I had negotiated because we got to a price. And he goes, well, I, you know, I never heard of this guy, but I'm gonna call up Ice Tea's manager and find out if he's for real. I'm like, oh man, that's so nice of you. Because <laughs> I really wanted to deal with Ice Tea and Coco because I love Ice Tea and Coco. And so do a lot of other people. I learned that like so many women especially love Coco, including my wife. My friend calls me back and he goes, I spoke to Ice Tea's manager 
and he spoke to Ice-T and Coco, and it's real. They want to do it. I'm like, holy shit. And he goes, and you got a, you got a screaming deal on Ice-T and Coco. He goes, I can't believe you're getting them for that. And I go, well, he wants half of it in cash on the day of. And he just started laughing. I'm telling you, given the weird paperwork and given the fact that he wanted half of it in cash when he, like in the paperwork it says he needed half of it at his hotel before he would come to the venue. It was really scary. I really felt like I was dealing with gangsters. I really did. It was scary. I almost didn't do it because it was so not straight up. Like I'm used to dealing with agencies. I'm used to dealing with, you know, straight up business management people, not gangsters turned into managers and PR people, you know? But in any case, he goes, dude, do the deal. It's going to be good. And I go, okay. So I go ahead and I, I get them at least to give me Coco's company name and, and wire information. Originally, I was wiring the money to Solji, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Then I finally got them to allow me to wire the money to Coco. So I wired half the deal money to Coco, and we had to give them half in cash on the day of. And then, uh, then my friend said, hey, now that you got them locked into a deal, ask them if they'll make you a shout out video. He goes, that'll really help you to get people to come. I had never even thought about making a shout out video. So I contact Solji and I say, hey Solji, I want them to do this video right here. Uh, oh, oh, one more thing. At the last minute, right as I'm, I'm, I sign the deal and I send it to him and I go, now, now I'm gonna send you the wire instructions and he goes, well Clint, we got a little bit of a problem because now somebody else wants them on the same date that you're asking for them. So, you know, they're offering more money. And I go, well, how much more? And he goes, whatever, whatever, whatever. And right at the last minute, they end up jacking up the price by another $10,000, right? Like total. And I call up my friend and I tell him about that. And he goes, yep, typical gangster move. Jack me for 10 grand right at the end. Then he goes, why don't you see if they'll make a shout, out vi a shout out video for you. That'll really help you get people to come. So I asked Solji, can they make me a shout out video? And he goes, let me get back to you. He goes, the video will be an extra $2,500. <laughs> so, you know, but all together, all in. So I asked my friend, what does he think? He goes, do it, do it, do it. So, you know, hey, Extras jacking me, gangster style. They jack, they jacked it up almost fifty percent more. Like we ended up with that, with the, with the extras. It was almost fifty percent more of, of a of a price. But in any case, we did it, and they gave us. It took them like a month to give us that shout out video, twenty eight seconds long. We had to wait a month for that video, and uh, and then we got it, and it was really exciting because. You know, they're, they're so current, they're so hip, they're so all over the place. And at the same time, they're just like me and Allie. They're just exactly the same as me and Allie. Well, comes to be Carnegie Hall, man. And, and I've never worked so hard in my whole life getting people to attend an event. I busted my ass getting people to show up at Carnegie Hall. You have no idea. And it was a three-day event and they were the final act. They were the last speakers on the last day at Carnegie Hall. And I remember I was up there for about an hour doing sales, enrolling people, answering questions about the offers that we made and just enrolling people and stuff, including the Income Doubler, which we're about to finish. We're like working on the Income Doubler. So many people have doubled their incomes already doing the Income Doubler and it's really been an amazing experience. And all of a sudden, I look over to the stage door and I see Coco in person in a short skirt, checking herself out in the mirror on her six inch tall high heels. And I'm like, and I say to Allie, oh my God, is it real? Is it, is it really her? And she goes, yep, it's really her. Now, Allie, meanwhile, 
was the one who met them at the stage door because we still had to give them half the money in cash. So Allie's got two big fat envelopes of hundred dollar bills in her, in her, in her pocket or whatever. She goes and meets them at the stage door, brings them to the dressing room and she's supposed to give the money to Solji. Now I didn't want to get in a situation where Solji got the money and then pretended like he didn't get the money. I don't know. I don't know anything. So I said to her, make sure you give Solji the money in front of them so that they see that he's getting the money. And she takes them to the dressing room, puts them in a nice dressing room. And she goes, oh yeah, I almost forgot. This is for you guys. And she shows them the two envelopes with the amounts marked on each one, hands them to Solji. And they're like, oh, whatever, right? Now, Ice-T and Coco are right there. And I'm like, oh my God, it's time. I was so freaking excited to meet Ice-T and Coco. You have no idea. I was so excited to see what does Coco really look like in person? I have no idea. I'd only seen photos of her. Let me just tell you this. Coco is hotter in person than in photos. Her photos are always hot. She's hotter than the photos. She's so beautiful and sweet and lovely. She looks harsh in a lot of her photos, but in person, she looks like a living doll, really. And they came out and everybody loved Ice-T and Coco. They were so fun and funny and he told so many great stories. And I asked him, Ice, what's the most important thing you ever learn? And he says, don't trust anybody. <laughs> and when he said that, I could just imagine like all the motherfuckers who have robbed him or stolen from him or jacked him, you know, ice. He was a real gangster. And he goes, and one more thing, don't expect nobody to wake up with your dream. If you got a dream, it's up to you to make it happen. Those are amazing words. Now, after like, you know, I had a long interview with those guys and they, they shared so many amazing things as a entrepreneur, because they really are. They're entrepreneurial people and everybody loved them. Stan Pearson is on here. He'll tell you he loved them. Dave Nassani's on here. He'll tell you he loved them. Patricia Gadget was on, is on here. She was there. She loved them. Everybody loved them. And when it was over, we had two different photo shoots that we had to do with them. The first photo shoot was in their dressing room. I came up with these amazing photo shoot scenarios, okay? The first one was for my elite attendees. And we're gonna have some kind of version of this with Dr. Oz coming up on June 12, 13, 14. Hey man, I do believe the United States of America will be open June 12, 13, 14. I think it'll be open May 1st. And I think by the middle of June, they're gonna figure it out. And my event with Dr. Oz, if you don't have your ticket to get a photo with Dr. Oz, you're a freaking idiot! Because there ain't nobody who's a bigger celebrity in the whole wide world right now than Dr. Oz. Yeah, that's right. And I got it all figured out. If they let us do the event at the venue, I got it figured out. If they don't let me do the event at the venue, I got that figured out and in some ways, the photos outside of the venue are even better than the venue. I got, I got it all figured out and that event is gonna happen. So the high level photos that we had, the high level photos were in the dressing room. We had champagne. We go back to the dressing room with Ice-T and Coco. Their manager is there. He's a real player and a baller. He's got his wife there. Sol G is there. I'm like, Sol G. Give me some love, baby. I'm like, you're my main man. I love you, man. You made it happen. It was so awesome. It was so freaking awesome. And we're hanging out there and me and Allie are taking pictures with Ice-T and Coco for a few minutes. And then we bring in all the people, like the elite attendees. And Ice-T and Coco are so nice. They're talking to everybody. They're like schmoozing. They're loving everybody. And I'm like, Look, guys, I really appreciate that you want to spend time with these people, but we got more photos to do after this, and we got to catch a boat. And if we don't catch the boat, we're going to miss the boat. We don't want to miss the boat. And Ice-T's manager is like, oh, man, Clint is a player. He, he's got business to take care of. 
And we did, we had to take care of business, but they were so freaking nice. And they, everybody loved iced tea and cocoa. I am telling you, if you need a celebrity for your event and you got enough money, you should hire iced tea and cocoa because they are freaking awesome. I loved them, everybody loved them. And uh, it all came from social media, it just came from networking and social media and being a good capitalist, a person who pays for what he wants. I pay, I want stuff, I pay for stuff, that's what I do. If you're interested in getting your picture with Dr. Oz, Dr. Drew, the Surgeon General of the USA, a NASA astronaut, the real Patch Adams, and more, go to imm20.com. imm20.com is the Instant Marketing Miracle event website. I have only a few tickets left for the Dr. Oz photos, and if you're smart, you will be there, man. That's gonna wrap up tonight's story. I got a special story for Easter tomorrow night. I'll tell you my story about meeting the Reverend Joel Osteen. It was one of the most moving spiritual experiences of my whole life as an adult. Until then, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow night for the Sunset Story. Good night, everybody.